5 button. And I'm pretty sure we are live. So let's see if anybody says hello to us, then we will know and we can get this cracking. Are we on? <laughs> I think we are. Right now. I find it strange because nothing changes. <laughs> right. And there's that tiny delay. So it's trying to figure out when exactly you are live or not. Well, I'm going to sit here and look at some nice models. and. Uh... We're on. We are on. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, those of you that are joining us, uh, we had a lot of fun the other night on the launch uh, stream for Day of Guard. So we decided we want to do them more regularly, um, starting with tonight. And tonight we're going to focus a little bit more on the painting, uh, seeing as it's sort of in the name. Um, and Andy's going to be working on the Archer model, uh, Scare Tend, uh, in a not dissimilar scheme to uh, the picture I put up that Rich graded earlier. So we'll have a talk Susceptible about it. Susceptible to change, though, Henry. Yeah. Oh, don't I know it, mate. Um, <laughs> that's the story of our relationship. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you some questions about... Uh, Color choices, I think, in a minute. Who have we got in? Kevin's in there. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Tom. Nice to see people in the chat. Stefan. So, more questions than area. Looking. Right. That all looks nicely in focus and whatnot. What, me? Mm -hmm. You can see my model. Um, um, so, yeah, I guess my first question, I guess, is yeah, is why, why the greens? Well, you seem to be so loathsome of the other day, so I was going to ask if you wanted uh, <laughs> me, me to change the scheme because we've only got a base coat on there. So, uh, what are you fancying? Well, I think I th so. What made you what made you think of of green? This 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 came up when we were chatting about how we pictured um, mm. the models, and I think in my mind I'd always pictured a, a blue or a white. I don't know, don't quite know why for this, seeing as all the arts ever been in black and white. Uh, <laughs> And yeah. I really like Rich's. I particularly like the blue light he put in uh, coming from the right hand side. Um, but yeah, I just wonder what made you think when, when you're picking up a model like this, especially one that you you haven't necessarily thought tons about when we've been we've been chatting. Like, what's what's your first step for colours? Well, <laughs> I just thought she would uh, want to hide in the woods, so. Um... You know, bright colours wouldn't be any good to her. Um, and I was going to go for red. Then I thought everyone will call a red riding hood. So, oh, okay. okay. So I didn't. I, I just couldn't handle all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think Mike's uh, just said, uh, "Should we change colours?" So paint a green. That's a that's a good exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I thought, but Henry's not feeling it. Um, so let's paint her a different colour because we do have a a green one already. So. I've only base coated it, so I think let's change the colour. What are you thinking? Oh, well, Stefan's surprised it's not purple, and I think we all are, Stefan. Now, listen here, right? <laughs> Come mind you, give it time. It does go nice with green, doesn't it? I'm sure it will find its way. I'm looking for something that isn't purple to show you, but <laughs> well, I can't find I've just seen one, but it's not my model. Anyway. Do you know what? We've been taking the mick a little bit about that. What? What is the reason that you, you, you know, everyone has favourite colours, don't they? But what, what is it that you've enjoyed so much about using purple, whether that's as the primary colour for the scheme or whether that's using it as lights um, across the model? Like, what is it about that colour that you just enjoy painting? I really like um, how sort of regal you can make it look. Um, so for things like cloth and stuff and... and uh, his Magnus, which is leaving me soon in the post. But you know how, like, uh, regal and powerful this colour is. Mm. It's really nice. Um, and obviously you can play with doing violet purples and magenta purples and mixing it between it. Um, so, yeah, it's just a really nice, versatile colour, I guess. I mean, on this palette, you've got the the violet purple on the top and then you have the the red purple below so nice variety so I don't yeah know. that's nice help. is it with regards to paints like i know there's certain colors we often really struggle to find sort of paint brands that we like their versions mm. of those colors with uh, is purple fairly 
is it you fairly user friendly when you pick it up for across most brands or is it one that's tricky and it's took you a while to find sort of your favorites for i definitely find that some are like the tone of but they're just a pig to work with right and like probably my most commonly used one is sunset purple scale uh and i like the tone. scale 75 fantasy games or or just scale, scale 75. Scale color regular yeah the sunset right. purple i really like that that's um quite re reliable but reasonably dull actually because it's so matte it's quite dull uh and then and then model color really so model color magenta is just amazing it's a little glossy but that's easy to deal with blue violet these colors have good coverage so you don't kind of mess around with and they're uh they're powerful so yeah i really i really like using those uh they're great there's a few citadel new ones i like i really like that barrack nar burgundy that's yeah i like that big fan of that i've been using that quite new, a bit and that's that's fabulous so i don't know i just like the look of the color cool. um if we look you're right it does have a lot of variety to it to be fair doesn't it it's uh there's, there's a lot of different tones you can you can do with it um we've got a few suggestions color wise for sort of autumnal colors um what about burgundy i'm feeling burgundy oranges browns yeah go on chuck a burgundy in there that's nice uh, yep. Andrew asks, do you always paint with a glove on uh, or just for camera no nah, it's just for camera we uh we both um yeah, we struggled with this when we started the YouTube channel. Use it, do we use gloves or not? Because we, we often tease people on on classes that, you know, if they want to improve their their social media following and likes and things, then you need to get those black black tattoo star gloves. You know, that's uh, that's absolutely key. Um, but we actually found, uh, other than the fact that sometimes our hands look a little gnarly uh, when we're filming so close up, um, which we we try to do in all the videos, get as close as possible. Um, we then put some of these black gloves on and actually it's it gives a very nice background sometimes to the models um, to when we're demoing certain things on them. Um, I found particularly things like when I'm doing the eye lens bits on a recipe demo or something like that, the, the black glove behind can really, really help. But no, we're we're both of us are fairly mucky uh, painters. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, that's that's all that one is. Uh, the Michael Jackson one glove, Mike's calling it. It's also because I'm going to hold the model. Um, so mm. I've, I've basically got it on the base um, and it's all in one. And that's mostly to to show you how good the figure looks in one piece and, and show you the size of it. Um, but I don't mind holding the base like the actual sculpted base. And then I'll work my way down and I'll paint it later. So a glove just stops it getting greasy so i think that's a good point as well we often chat about we often get asked about paint holders and, and things like that um you often see those ones with the little metal sort of uh, bar coming up the side don't you so you can you can hold it without touching it um i think you said you you always tend to hold the model however you want and and try where possible to work top down is that right so that you're not yeah but too much yeah i think you know i'm going to do some base coats on this just to get the color scheme right and it'll be good to just show um but then i'd probably paint the the bird and, and finish that because once that's done you know you've got no risk of doing anything uh mm -hmm. then do the facial features which are obviously the most important and and get that skin area done um and then you're safe to just work on this area and finish with the base so for me this figure it makes a lot of sense just to work top down um mm -hmm. if i was going to do sub assemblies maybe i'd do the bird separately um but then i could glue that on and, and work on the miniature uh, and maybe i would have her separate from the base but i'm absolutely fine working with her like this and it's quite fun just to see her done so yeah it's cool um so i've got some uh some ak black red uh i don't know if we're allowed to like these anymore <laughs> but uh i'm gonna try that out because i've never used it before and i'm always keen on on trying new paints um and as you can see it looks like quite a nice uh wine red so i'm just gonna cover over my green and see how that looks gal vorback from citadel would be uh pretty similar with regards to switching 
switching up a colour as as early as it is on this anyway. Um, is there any anything to be sort of wary of, um, or is green generally a, an easy one to to paint over? It's going to change the tone, so I would have preferred to have gone. If you watch me put it over the white feather, it's not crazy different, but it will slightly change the tone. Um, and is that due to the the sort of red that you're putting over it, or is that more due to green being particularly sort of powerful? Well, just any paint that's the, any paint normally is diluted, so it mm. goes on smooth, and that means it's going to have some kind of um, translucency and that means it's just going to be effective no matter what's underneath it and that's why we do a, a pre-highlight because it's always going to affect what we do over the top so um i'd, I'd rather go over the black and white we did before but it's mm. not a problem um we will uh, get there and actually it'd be quite good in the shadows of the skin nice i'm just having a quick check-in on the campaign while you're getting that paint on we are getting very close to unlocking the next stretch goal. I chucked Can't up wait. a load more stretch goals today, actually. Um, and uh, a couple of them we're very excited about to be able to do. Um, yeah, the 30K stretch goal is an academic bust. So, uh, Andy, explain exactly what we mean when we say an academic bust. So it's simplified bust, uh, smaller and it's basically designed to to practice and that could be practice uh if you've done loads of of busts before uh and you just just want to practice something else or a uh a different style or it could be perfect if you've never tried a bust before um just because it's slightly smaller it's focusing on the most important things which are going to be uh generally the face you know, really, when it comes to a bust, uh, in my opinion, I'm just thinking about that face. And often there's other cool things on busts, like huge horns uh, <laughs> or antlers. But uh, really, it's the face. And when I'm thinking, how am I going to paint this? I pretty much only think about the face, like, mm. how am I going to paint that? So I guess, um, yeah, and, uh, an so academic... A, sim a simpler, more tightly focused sort of piece then i guess as a as a as a model yeah definitely cool so um the the academic bust is going to be of uh uh Hiergard, the the woodsman character uh, but as andy's just alluded to there we've simplified him somewhat so we're focusing in on his face and on his uh sort of upper chest area so there aren't the huge great antlers and horns to deal with um nor are there any weapons or anything like that to deal with um we we've got a few things we're going to offer with the academic bust with regards to education as well um and actually i think the first unlock after the bus will be a full uh it's effectively my first bust type of tutorial um it's, it's something we we've run several classes on uh sort of real life painting classes not online ones um where we've used diff uh, different busts some from uh, other companies um we used that lovely orc uh, academic bust from hera a while ago that was really popular um and then we used our own seth bust fairly recently uh, a few times actually um and he he was uh, perfect for, for for teaching on and we're sort of hoping this academic bust will be as well um but whilst we're unable to uh run those classes we'll, we're going to see what we can do uh see what we can do for for getting something out there because we're missing the teaching a lot uh, let's have a look into these questions again uh stefan's just asked uh, out of curiosity what which green was the base coat that you the previous base coat it was one of my favorites which is it used to be called reflective green and now they've changed oh it yeah to they changed, right. <laughs> so there's a good one so what's it called now refractive but it's right. 890 yeah uh, with, with vallejo paints guys always always go on the numbers um that's partly because vallejo have a lot of different ranges model color game color model air etc and they like to use the same names for colors even though it's not the same color um and then occasionally they'll just change the name completely um so yeah we'll, we'll always go by the numbers you know notice when we put up our paints used we always put the numbers um 
which is always really frustrating when you have to come write the description and the paints on the other side of the room and you go on oh, i know this was the name but what's the damn number um, <laughs> on there um what else we got on there uh, what painting lamps are being used two two different ones uh, yeah two of them uh daylight company is the brand we both use uh and over the years we've bought a variety of them i believe that the their current range the one we use is the lumi l-u-m-i yeah i've got a lumi on the left and a task lamp xl on the right they're led lamps they're really nice they're very light um they've got a nice base uh that connects a, a clamp a nice base clamp um the newer ones much more robust than the old ones uh, and the connector for the power is uh, a much nicer design as well um, especially if you do travel around and take your painting lamps with you they're obviously fairly unwieldy still because they're great big angle poise lamps but um the lumi's the lumi really was an excellent upgrade on the on the task lamp yeah yeah definitely so i'm just giving a little red wash around the skin areas with the same red just where they interact and it will work as a shadow color anyway like that. i like it in red mate <laughs> you prefer cool. it red <laughs> i wouldn't say i prefer it i guess i'm just excited to see it's purely selfish i'm just excited to see the models painted differently you know we've got to wait <laughs> a few months until they're in other people's hands right you know we know the handful that are out there and we can't wait to show you all the other paint jobs that we've commissioned um but it's just yeah it's just selfishness just want to see them in see them in other colors so i love this when often we'll get questions about um recipes or, or color schemes that people have ideas for sometimes it's really fun to do that with someone because you might have an idea for it but not really have the time to go and do that project um so it's quite fun if someone goes oh that's really cool i'm going to do that for my army and then they do it and you're like oh well, there we go now i know what that looks like um academic bust sounds like the one i'll be tackling first yeah, yeah. great Mike. that's 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 the idea for it but um don't certainly don't think of it as a you know it, it's no less detailed in the sense it's just a lot more focused uh, on what we're doing give you uh, confidence Andrew's off. Well. sorry mate say that again so to give you confidence if you've never yeah. tried a bust you can yeah. sort of start with that one and then get to grips with the skin and then doing other other details you'll be loving yeah will you be doing the skin purple no no okay um <laughs> is that a question I, I, from I you? That no that was from me um, oh and that wasn't oh, even right. about purple sorry that was me referencing uh rodrigo's Rodrigo. amazing, uh, box art for the uh, oh yeah i just the... didn't know if that was a question uh, from no me. sorry no, that was completely genuine um <laughs> <laughs> out of interest how long has the process for the kickstarter taken Whew. Uh, Three years. long time yeah andrew Steele. other than having an excellent surname i kind of feel like i recognize that name andrew were you in australia when we were over there pop that in the uh, the thing if you were um mike's just asked again uh not again mike's had another question rather are there any colors that you really despise painting Oh, I dread. Um, I mean, nobody looks forward to yellow by hand over black, right? Um, mm. But there's 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 ways to deal with it, so it's fine. Um, let me think. What colours do I, do I get annoyed with? I mean, skin is always difficult, and I always think about it a long time before starting. Um, something like this is not too bad because you just got a little bit of an arm and a face but mm. uh when it's like a bust i'll think for ages about what exact tone i want to do um painting rock <laughs> i hate that <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no i have no end uh, i've been doing this base and i have no end of trouble trying to make natural looking uh rocks and i think the key is to not do any neutral grays um and that's where it just looks wrong where you just use plain kind of grays it has to have some kind of coloring to be natural and it's the same for um the wolf i'm painting right now so it's obviously gray but i'm actually using um 
a kind of pink flesh tone in the highlight, which is quite subtle right now, but it makes a huge difference to how it looks in the hand. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I guess anything you think is going to be neutral, I force myself to add some more colour in it. Same with uh, silver non-metallic metal as well. Plain greys, it's very difficult to make it look uh, interesting, I think. Mm. I guess that's it, really. <laughs> no, that's cool. I think that, that was some really interesting, some really interesting points. Um, so, Andrew, that's uh, you're not Aussie, so that's that's fine. Thanks for answering, bud. Um, yeah, about three years the project's taken us to get to this stage, uh, and we we hadn't uh, decided on it being Kickstarter from the beginning. Um, we had a little chat on the last stream about uh, why Kickstarter and, and why we ended up going that route. The really nice thing is, is given the last couple of days, it's it's completely vindicated that decision uh, to go with it. It's it's given us that confidence to know that we can uh, we can produce miniatures. We can be a small sort of boutique miniatures producer uh, and, and get those models out that we we desperately want to. Um, this has just been a, a really a really good way for us to do that. Um, so we've already talked about several projects now um, that we want to want to get cracking on. A um, couple of more guys dropping in. Gary, Ryan, I assume it's Ryan. Might be Nick, not sure. Hi to either of you. Are you here? Um, Kevin, I was going to paint my version red when it appeared. Now I feel like I'm copying you. I wouldn't worry about yeah, right. that, but there's nothing nothing original under the sun or whatever the phrase is. Um, I'll be doing another one that isn't red. Enjoy anyway. it. Have fun. This is just my live stream one. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to put a wash on the bird, I think. And because I've changed to red, I need to do a much cooler brown, I think. I think that this uh, really orangey warm brown doesn't really work with the red now. It was fine with the green, but uh, this doesn't work uh, in my opinion. So I'm just going to probably create a wash that changes the tone, but also get some uh, definition out on the feathers. So I'm going to do that with some paint <laughs> what we got my rhinox must be here on the other desk tom, go uh, tom stallard dropping in hi tom lovely to see you we've uh, we have we've really really enjoyed these these streams it's something i think we're going to look at doing a lot more of so uh, yeah let us know if you let us know if you dig it um mike a gray peregrine falcon would look cool Right. I agree. Well, I guess they've got lots of blue and black in them, haven't they? Peregrines. One of them nests near my mum's house. Gonna start with like quite cool. Yeah. I mean, it's not got three eyes that I'm aware of, but. Still... <laughs> so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black to the the brown. One of my. Uh least favorite moments during the sculpting process was seeing the eagle in its or the hawk rather in its um very basic form um before it was all detailed up um it, it would definitely definitely have more of the the pigeon about it didn't it <laughs> and then and then the next time we saw it all of a sudden looked superb um so it's quite Quite an interesting one. It's Not got a wonderful profile down the bottom. See, when you look straight down, the profile, the wings is awesome. Mm. Oh, it's lovely. It's really lovely. I think we we spoke on the last stream, didn't we, about maybe uh, maybe snipping it off and using it on some other models too. Yeah. Uh, Stefan's asked, uh, not one hundred percent mini related, but have you considered making a Discord server for patrons? Yes, we have. It's on we've the got, way. Yeah, we've got quite a few ideas for uh, Patreon, uh, Stefan. So, uh, what? Yeah, watch this space. We do have a Discord uh, server. We've had one for several years, actually. It was set up by a, a couple of our New Zealand friends, um, but we have not been terribly good at maintaining it. If I'm absolutely honest, but it is something I would like us to to look back into. I, I, I've started using Discord a lot more myself now. Um, so yes, it's it's all set up and ready to go. We just need to go in and, and tweak a few bits, and we will have it good to go for for Patreon. 
Um, there's a lot more going to be coming for Patreon and for YouTube, um, guys. I, now, now that we sort of, well, by no means the work is done, as it were, on this Kickstarter, but now, uh, so now it's, it's looking after itself a little bit more. We're uh, we can put some of that time back into these these other things this year, and and the support you guys have given us on both of those has been huge. You know, it would have been would have been pretty easy for us as a company to effectively disappear this year, like so many other other people unfortunately have. Um, but our plan is very much to come out of this whole situation a lot stronger than we went in. So, uh, yeah, and YouTube and Patreon are very very key to that. Um, will you be painting any of the new miniatures for competitions next year? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it was such a, such a thrill and a, a satisfying thing to see Andy taking home gold. I think with every single, every single sci-fi model from our range has won a gold at, at a painting, at a, at a significant painting competition. Um, so yeah, I can't, I cannot wait to see these models at painting comps. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. My um I'm gonna try and do them all or are you gonna pick a few? I am gonna do them all. It's just a matter of when, but the one the one I wanna put like be my sort of star is this, I think. The uh the hunter bust. I wanna go all out on that and I'm thinking about it daily. So <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, the and also, well, to be honest, the woodsman bust is just crazy. So that's a showstopper in my opinion. It's just uh, just amazing. So both of those busts, but yeah, honestly, the um, the whole collection will be in my in, in the competition circuit. So um, this gonna one be, I paint live, maybe not. It's going to be pretty uh, pretty crazy, I think, isn't it? Once the competitions get back up and running, you've got two years worth of. Uh, I know. <laughs> stuff lined up, and they, you know, things can be pretty exciting. I'm happy because uh, <laughs> I like wouldn't have got an amazing display together this year, but now uh, I'm, I'll be confident with that because I'll get the whole range done. So <laughs> I'm kind of happy in a way. Now we've got some more people dropping in. Jana Paints and Piers. Nice to see you both in here. Thanks for dropping in. Um, Sergio, a pigeon would be less epic, but really funny. I agree. <laughs> so when you, when you get yours through, Sergio, make sure you tag us in the uh, in the pigeon. I had uh, one of those Facebook um, oh. memories or whatever they whatever they're called, where it shows you a photo you took many years ago, and it was what was it three years ago, something like that, when we were in Oz last, and I snapped some weird Aussie looking pigeon that's got like a mohawk. It's pretty cool. Um, Scott, do you think the model is sturdy enough to attach a string through the ends of the bow and the hand? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a really yeah, it's a good question that we covered it ever so slightly on the last stream. The model, particularly this one, is a lot more robust than it may look. Um, there's some nice flex to the resin. It's not too brittle. Um, you can see there. So I think you could some lovely bit of modeling there i think you could easily string it um, yeah i, I want to think what i was looking at, i think it was mark on the lancelot model from the recent big child echoes of camelot i think mark strung strung that bow I'm trying to think what i was looking at recently where someone had done it um yeah it looks really great um tim's asking if you were to change your mind about the color of the bird would it be too late now, or would and, and would you have to strip it? No, it's um, so. It was a black and white pre highlight, uh, which allows you to use quite diluted colours. So the only um, paint on the bird was a thin coat of a brown of uh, of this Dubai brown, and then I've just given it a wash. Um, to darken it i'll probably give it another couple of wash so if i wanted to change it to gray or something that would be absolutely fine i wouldn't worry about stripping it too much but uh yeah it would be no no trouble at all just a bit of time <laughs> hmm. yeah i mean you re you repaint areas of your display models a lot don't you yeah i very rarely get it right first time so um 
But if you're using reasonably diluted paint, then you do have a couple of uh, tries, really. Uh, I'm just trying out this wine red, but it's a bit translucent for my liking. So I'm going to switch to the ever faithful corn red because I know how that behaves and I know that is going to cover. So. And that is a, a very common issue with reds, isn't it? Is there their poor coverage in spite of, of perhaps considering it a you know a powerful bright sort of color they're, they're not they're not the strongest are they i think that um when it comes to choosing paint how nice it is to use is as important as the color and and other things like that like it's often my choice is well how how nice is this paint going to be um because if i'm going to spend a long time with it then uh, it's got to be a good paint, right? Definitely. I think we may as well take advantage of all these viewers while we're talking about paint. What's some? Um, what are some of your favourite paints? What are you know? This is the in the chat now. What are some of your favourite paints? What are some of your favourite characteristics of paints? Um, and don't don't just say dropper bottles. Um, that's a whole other conversation. Um, but you know what, what? What is it that perhaps you wish there was? Was there a red that did this, or a yellow that covers like this, or whatever? Because you know, it'd be cool if if uh, if we were to able able to put together perhaps a list of our favourites, or or maybe even in the future see if we could do something with some paints. So yeah, let us know in the chat if you've got any any preferences. So I don't know if you can see Henry, but the wine red on the thigh here is insanely glossy and it's very translucent so for me that's not a paint i want to try again uh well that's on the right the right thigh there yeah that there yeah that's very glossy isn't it yeah so i'll give it another try because uh, i literally just had a quick go with it but I'm not too impressed with that so we're going for corn red and just starting to highlight the cloth now. So corn red's quite dark, but for this, it's forming a, a highlight. And it works really nicely. Any more questions going on? Yeah, we've got some good things. There's a little delay, isn't there? So there's got some nice things coming in. Uh, Death Row Jeff Row. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic handle um the best paints for him is the one that works for the job couldn't agree more um we had a nice comment on one of the youtube videos recently about someone just saying it was nice to see us not use one particular brand um and i think that's something we've always been big proponents of is you know is get nearly all brands that are available now and certainly hobby stores are getting better and better at stocking more brands now nearly every brand has fantastic paints within it and terrible paints within it um so limiting yourself to just one is uh is really really in our opinion a, a pretty silly idea um you're sort of just unnecessarily uh, hamstringing yourself um with that one um scale 75 metallics are brilliant yes they are i completely agree on that one uh, and how matte their flat colours are. Yeah, well, I mean that's their that was their whole thing, wasn't it? Um, that that matte finish um, that they they managed with the flat colours. Um, yeah, certainly plenty of those in our our personal painting collections. I think my least favourite is Warpstone Glow. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But why is that, Scott? What's, uh, what, what's it's got been... no coverage. <laughs> um, I talk about some greens actually in the upcoming. Uh, part two of the uh void dragon tutorial actually um really like gw reds Gav? Yeah. yeah yeah i agree i think you do as well don't you andy that's uh using one right now <laughs> nice some nice ones in there tartan paint would be nice wouldn't it jack wouldn't it just that and camouflage paint we're working uh, on stripe it. paint would be great isn't uh, it on the kickstarter we're doing coming april 1st yeah that's correct that there is 100% correct. Uh, Chimera colours violet. The pigment yeah. density is marvellous, but you can't airbrush them. Oh, you can. <laughs> uh, okay. White off-white that dilutes easily to a glaze. That's interesting request. 
Yeah, I mean, white white is always a tricky one due to the the size of the pigment, the actual particles themselves. It's it's why you very rarely get a a smooth white um, aerosol uh, paint. Um, so obviously, when you dilute them down to create a glaze or create a wash, these colours are going to split. The the pigment's going to split fairly fairly quickly. Um, I believe it's why a lot of people quite like white inks um, because they are very very thin very very dilute but they're obviously still very powerful they're still very together um, it's because they use a, a pigment dye usually rather than a, a ground pigment um, but yeah that would be that would be interesting um, Andy how do you rate chimera paints and do you use them often uh, we can use them in a minute if you like they're um they're dead in front of me. Here we go. Uh, Gary, give uh, give Element a bell or go on the website. I'm pretty sure they've got some in stock, or they certainly did. Not last. anymore. Was it? Are they all gone again? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> keep bugging them. Keep bugging them. They're, they're pretty good at getting them in. There is, there's definitely an issue, guys, at the moment with the supply chain um, for things like paints and uh, paint brushes, actually, within the hobby because of um, what's going on in the world at the moment. So... It's not not a bad idea to grab grab a pot if you see of something that you use you use a lot. Um, sorry, bud, you said you were gonna gonna whip a whip a chimera out then. Uh, yeah, we can we can paint something with chimera tonight. I'll uh, fin I'm gonna finish base coating this red, and then I'm gonna block in the skin and block in the hair. I uh, just want to get everything base coated really so it looks less messy and then um, maybe work on one part tonight and then maybe another part another night. I'm actually just highlighting uh, this cloth over the dark red. Just some um, beginning highlights. And this cloth is really good to paint. Very would, nice. you often, uh, would you often base coat the majority of the model? It's, I change like how I do stuff all the time and I have been doing it that way at the moment. Um, one of the really good things is it lets you understand your colour scheme. So I need to make the browns and whatever colour I do, the feathers and the hair all work. So I might as well base them all now because like I said, the previous brown I had didn't work with the red. So I think just just getting all those colours blocked in will make sure your colour scheme works and also um, less likely to be messy later. So I think it's uh, a good way of doing things. But um, yeah, I don't I don't ever do the same thing for every model. It's always different, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, sure. so. Yeah. I've got some good some good comments coming in now. A bit of chat. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this might be Ryan, Andy. What colours do you add to grey rocks to make them less boring? <laughs> uh, Browns and greens, because then it makes them feel um, more natural. So I think having browns in there uh, helps tie it into the earth. So, you know, if you have neutral greys, it looks too cold. And when you have like a forest environment, it just stands out in not a good way, in my opinion. Um, so having lots of brown, whether that's a dark brown or lighter browns, um, yeah, it really helps and greens too. But if you look at a bunch of rock in the forest, you can see all the sort of the variety of tones in there. I've been using um, scale 75 rainy grey and uh, brown grey. Obviously, it's got brown in it. And uh, I really like those because they're so matte. They look like really dry rocks. And uh, yeah, they're just really nice, good go to colours, I think. Mm -hmm. For, For sure. Rocks. Um, a uh, interesting one here. I'll see if you agree, but or not. Um, Kevin's saying he, he likes a lot of the scale seventy five colours, but sometimes finds the greens and blues in particular can look a bit grainy or dusty. Um, it's the matting. I, agent. I suspect that's to do with the matting agent. Yeah, they're, they're as I say, scales whole shtick is this that they're this super flat, super matte finish, and, and unfortunately. That means you are always going to sacrifice something um, and that that can mean you end up with that that slightly grainy finish um stefan uh 
he's saying I can't airbrush the chimeras. That's fine. Um, if you are, it depends what you're wanting from the chimera paint. Um, if it's just that you want that saturation that they're so fantastic for, um, and you're using your airbrush, you can always pop a, a dot or two of ink into the color that you're you're trying to make more more vibrant. Um, and obviously that is incredibly dilute, you know, or, or, or thin rather. Uh, anyway, um, so you you know you shouldn't have any issues with your with your airbrushing um with that um what white do you recommend andy uh and yeah let's talk about white ones quickly then i know my two go-to's my airbrush and my brush white yeah same so um a lot of people like fancy uh tube paints for white and they they rate them uh i've tried them all and it's a very obvious option but the white i get the best results with is model color white um yep i think it's fantastic i tend to use for most things off whites so i love my highlight skin from vallejo you can see it's like a pinkish uh, off white i use that a lot i am scared of running out <laughs> and i use ivory which is that kind of uh, mm -hmm. warmer off white and these are really smooth, uh, really, really great. So I tend to use these guys, but when I do use pure white, um, I, I think this is fantastic. I think yeah. I've tried every white. Um, I've got the Chimera white as well. Um, that's really nice, really pure, but I go through a lot of white. So um, yeah, honestly, I like this one best. And yeah, I've tr I think I've tried most whites uh, from the art shop, um, every hobby white, and I've just got on with this the best. I'm looking for things I've painted in white <laughs> to sh show you. But uh, yeah, that one. And then if you're airbrushing, then it has to be Tamiya. There's no, yeah. no other option. That's the Tamiya acrylic uh, rather than the enamels, the XF2, the flat white. Uh, if you watch many of our youtube videos you'll see we use use a lot of it um and we don't use white ink we choose to use it instead um it's yeah it's it's faultless really it's incredibly reliable you can thin thin it to within an inch of its life and it's still you're still able to control it, it still keeps its uh, integrity which is great um so but yeah that's a really common one on our classes actually to get asked about about the whites um, Gary, is it? Uh, it's really nice to see some live painting, isn't it? Just we're um, we definitely want to do plenty more of this. Um, will I be entering painting comps in the future? I don't think so, but um, I forget what we were on. We were on an interview recently, and we talked about about. Oh, it was when we did the face hammer um, painting competition the other week. Um, I did a golden demon, and it, and it went well, and I had fun, and that was great. But I, it's it's not something that particularly motivates me, if I'm honest. Um, uh, competitive painting, I admire it a lot, and I thoroughly enjoy going to painting competitions, and I'm really looking forward. So this year, I was planning to to go to most of the big ones uh, to sort of support Andy and, and and see what see what else was going on, meet meet the community. Um, but I think. I think there's a, a handful of the larger ones I would I would like to take some models to enter to display simply to to share and, and to enjoy enjoy being part of the show. But um, it's just just not something that's I mean, it's, it's literally the polar opposite to Andy, I guess. It's just it's just not a, a bug I have um, when it comes to that that competitive uh, thing with the painting. Yeah, I think I always talk to people uh when they want like help with painting and uh, you have to decide what do you want from your hobby mm. and um, like competition painting isn't for anyone and that doesn't matter it's such a such a small thing and uh, yeah if you, if you just if you don't fancy it then yeah totally get that <laughs> it's uh, yeah, there's loads of loads of ways to hobby right and that's um, yeah I think it's definitely a more of a conversation to it as well, isn't there? With the the idea of entering a competition to be competitive, 
there's entering a competition mm -hmm. to get feedback from the judges and improve and, and see where you're at against your peers. Um, and then thirdly, there's what I mentioned then where you enter a, a competition more you enter a show simply to be part of the show to it to enjoy sharing your work alongside other people um it might be might be an interesting topic to for us to have a chat about a, a more long format chat maybe we can get some of our friends on that, uh, that are also on the on the competitive circuit as it were um yeah there's it maybe we could get i don't know neil or someone on and uh and rich and, and and have a chat with them about about how they approach it and why they why they love it um lots to talk about white paint on there oh yeah hi chris nice to see you what have we got any white paint suggestions? Com, com art com art i've heard that one a few times um through the airbrush again i think it's it's really tough for me anyway to even bother with another airbrush white paint Great. simply because Tamir is it, it ticks every box it's it's good value it's incredibly reliable um and I'm very familiar with it um so you know that's always our suggestion whenever anyone asks but I have heard about Medea com art stuff um Schminky I've heard that name before as well is that one of those tube paints the Schminky one yeah I way way prefer model color to that. Is, that is that ben comets maybe is that where yeah. i'm remembering that from yeah yeah donkeys donkeys years ago when i've got some on the, desk. One of the only painters maybe. you ever saw online <laughs> i uh yeah the for me model color is much nicer than the schmink much nicer but it's all uh preference right but yeah. i have tried it and i do prefer my model color uh Let's have a look. So, why don't you talk us through a little bit, a little bit more of where you're at currently in the process? I've base coated the skin, and I've used one of my favourite new paints to base coat skin, which is Night Quest of Flesh, which is uh, quite a new Citadel paint, and it's very similar to Bugman's Glow, but it is less saturated if you compare them less pink and I think it gives a very natural uh, shadow for painting skin, very adaptable or highlight for different ethnicities. Um, and yeah, it's one of my favorite additions to, to the Citadel line. And there's not a lot of pre-made skin paints I love, um, but Night Quester, big fan. It's that lovely natural pinky brown. So I nice use that a lot. Also, it's a layer, not a base, which means it's slightly, slightly smoother. Not a huge thing in it, but that put the bug ones away. Love this. Uh, and you can just add a touch of red or something to it and it will bring it alive. Um, my other my other go to base coat is red leather from Vallejo, which I think is here. Uh, and I was going to use that, but because I've got the red uh, cloth, I've used a slightly pinker rather than a more orange skin base color. But these two are both fantastic uh, base coats for skin. Really nice, really easy to use and reliable. So that's why we like them. Excellent. Nice. Red le as a leather question in the in the comments actually uh, from Scott. If I was using black leather from scale 75 as the base for a, a sword handle or something like that, what color would be a good highlight for that? That's a, that's an interesting one. I use black leather a lot uh, when I'm painting leather, Scott. I tend to use it to shade the main leather color I've got on there, and that that can really it, it it's it's sort of a purple, isn't it? Black leather. It, it's um it's a nice shade for for a whole variety of um mid tones or or, 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 or base base paints for, for your leather um you could go with something much sort of ready and brown like a like a rhinox hide or something like that or you could even if you've got the scale 75 leather set which has got black leather in um that has a real nice progression to it, it you know brown leather works great over that um it's a nice shade for the orange leather in that set as well yeah really nice for orange um 
it's it's a great paint i i use it i use it for weathering actually i use it for i often use it for um if i'm painting in some streaks when i'm not using my oil paints i'll often switch to black leather for a few little streaks um really 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 nice paint need to shake the hell out of it um i found um otherwise you get that weird sort of jelly stuff don't you the the the, the, the medium out of top but it's um yes yeah, a great great paint um, i mix um pale blue with it and the vallejo pale blue yeah the gray and then you get really nice um really cold highlights when you mix it into the uh the black leather if you want something more subtle and neutral then you can use something like deck tan mm. um but it kind of depends on the the surface mm. you want i guess um i often use black leather as a highlight for for black and then add a little gray a little ivory or something like that in. you could even it is very purple so you could use something like pastel violet uh would work fine but you know you can use it to go into anything like magenta mm. actually this violet red is a good step up from black leather you can see it's a desaturated purple just like black leather is um but yeah, very versatile paint, really. I think mm. you can say, what do I highlight it with? But I think you need to kind of work out what you're looking to do with it. So what's the surface? Yeah, I, I think as well, it's worth saying, like, it, its coverage isn't brilliant. So I, I don't, I would never be picking black leather as something to, to base coat something with. <laughs> um, as I say, I, mean, I nearly always go to it to shade down rather than highlight up from Um so I, I think I think that might be worth bearing bearing in mind. Um, but yeah, very versatile paint. Certainly, certainly in my top probably fifteen that I use most regularly. I would say when I'm I'm army painting. Um, yeah. I ran out ages ago and uh, <laughs> I haven't ordered anything for. Ages. Yeah, I was going to say it's one of the few I've I've ordered multiple bottles of. Uh, if I uh, do an order, I'll get another one. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Is uh, Sam. Sam Joseph Smith saying uh, com art is great for, for pre-shading. I think there's an interesting thing we perhaps gloss over sometimes with, with paints is, is the familiarity of them. Um, com art may well be fantastic for airbrushing and, and doing all that with. And the key thing there is if, if you use it and you like it and you get the results you want from it, then that is the right paint for you. And, and you don't always... It's not always a case of which is best or which is better. It's if something's working for you and it's made by a fairly large company, so you can be fairly confident that it will be around for a long time, um, then then great, go with it. You know, but there's uh, like I was saying earlier, there's there's just zero reason I think I would ever try anything now. I've I've tried I've tried Comar, I've, I've tried all of these, these white inks, everything. And Tammy is what works best for me. Um so yeah, I think it's it's always worth knowing that as well. You know, is, is people often ask us, oh, what's your recipe? What you've used for this? It's not always as simple as, well, if you use these paints, you'll get this result. Um, I think it's something we always focus on a lot in our classes is to try and explain why we're using, what we're using, uh, or what it is we like about them. Um, Craig, hi, Craig. Nice to see you. Do you have any recommendations for books about painting or fantasy sci-fi art? That's Ooh, really yeah. a good question. Um, you love your sort of fantasy and sci-fi art coffee table books, don't you? You've got that great one recently, didn't you? Um, is it Brom? Yeah, Brom is a great book. From You can get it from Amazon Easy as well. And that's really great. Um, um, in painting books, for me, the, the two most influential or whatever you want to call them the the ones i've got the most joy out of reading and, and over the last few years has been uh tank art yeah hell yeah uh, absolutely brilliant let me go and grab it off the shelf i'll show you <laughs> so this is tank art by michael rinaldi um, it's done a series of them. This is the German armor one. Um, it's it's just brilliant. 
um, the, 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 if you're into your, your military star modeling uh, scale models, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, that alongside with the old Forge World uh, model masterclass book, the first one in particular, very similar sort of stuff just on smaller scale sci-fi models, but very, very similar techniques, unsurprisingly, because it's mainly written by Phil Stachinskis, who's a, a big military modeler um, and painter. Um, so th those two for me are probably my my favorites. I do very often when I'm ordering, doing an online order, I'll I'll pick up a new paint book or, or these these sort of magazines, weathering type magazines that come out. And, and some of them have been great. And other times I think I've just spent 10 pounds on a book that's just full of pictures of muddy vehicles. Um, yeah. Feel a bit silly. Google image muddy tank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, but those are my favorite. What about your fave, uh, fave painting book? Is that like instructional book? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, to be honest, um, there isn't any I, I, re I really like. Um, I really just prefer looking at art books and I just find them really fascinating. And um, yeah, when I was looking at how to paint the wolf, uh, I just looked at my art books. Um, and the same with this, I just looked at all my art books and and photos uh, rather than the, the paint books. But I guess at the moment, what inspires me to paint is um, really nice uh, two-dimensional art and uh, seeing what we can learn and what I can learn from, from that, I guess. And, and there's always bits of art that stand out to me and I go, oh, I really want to emulate that on a miniature or something. Um, I did have Forge World Masterclass number one. That's amazing. Oh, and I, I, I honestly don't think um, I've done enough out of that book. I think I should uh, should do more. Keep keep chatting. I'll be back in two seconds. Sorry. My dog's just coming. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> so I've got a very autumnal theme going on right now. Uh, I think I'm going to paint the feathers in quite a light colour. What are you feeling for the hair? I don't know what are you. I quite like the sort of silvery white thing. Silvery white. So maybe go for a grey base coat and see how that looks. Yeah. Also, I've got to deal with the sash. Maybe a yellow could be cool. So we could give the chimeras a go because we want to do the chimeras. I think that'd be good, man. We're sort of we're coming up to the hour mark now, so maybe that'd be a nice. A nice sort of bit of painting to to finish up with. Maybe spend a bit of time on that. People are cool with us going touch longer. Um, show, show us the dog. She's outside now. I will on the next stream. Um, so well, let's answer a few questions while Andy's sorting his paint out on his palette. Um, I know he's a huge fan of this Chimera Yellow. Uh, so looking forward to sharing that with you. Um, is there a schedule for these streams? Uh, there will be, as I said earlier, we, we really love doing them. So we'd like to schedule at least three more uh, during the Kickstarter campaign. We haven't really mentioned that, have we? Not until the very beginning. Um, the the Dagar Kickstarter campaign. We, we'd like to get uh, a few guests on, some people that have, have been involved in the project in different capacities and have a chat with them. We think we think that would be interesting anyway, so it would be great if you guys could let us know on that. And I will put up a schedule for that as soon as we've got them locked in. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we really enjoy this. I think we I think there's plans afoot to, uh, to, to maybe put out a bit more of this type of material for you guys uh, soon. Uh, Tim, do you guys think you'll be back out on the road soon? Could you do socially distanced classes? Um, no, is is the, the short, <laughs> short answer, Tim. Um, it sucks, mate. It really does. I this week, I actually last week rather, I just did a whole heap of refunds for for classes. Um, with Christmas coming up and whatnot, we didn't we didn't want to hold people's money and stuff when we still didn't have a date. We one of the fundamental strengths of our classes um is that the hands-on nature of them um how close you're able to get to us when we're painting so you can see all the things that are going on and you can see us putting the paint on the model but then also us going around 
spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with people um you know whether that's just hovering over their shoulder and checking they're doing things okay or if someone actually asks you to come over and demonstrate something we can demonstrate that for them and we just think that would be lost with with the social distancing um so it's been really tough like we you know that's that's where we started is is, is teaching and we will get back to it as soon as it's viable and we don't feel it it compromises the end product um trust me so, as soon as we're good to go there are an awful lot of people that have us booked for various things um so we will we will be back uh with with a vengeance um four twelve model masterclass books yeah yeah big fan big 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 fan uh gav where do you guys get your plinths from uh well from now on we'll be getting them from our own range gav um we've we've unlocked a few uh during the kickstarter stretch goals that will be able to be purchased during your pledge manager which is uh, what happens at the end of the campaign. Um, we've got some more plints in the stretch goals uh, over the next sort of few, I think the next three or four stretch goals, there's another plinth involved in it. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking to provide our own our own now, just to exactly the sizes and, and dimensions we want. Uh, show us the puppy. No, no, she'll, she'll come on next time, I promise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> AK did do a great series of mags called tanker i think yeah that that does ring a bell as well sam i think that's right um just starting a night shift so could happily watch you guys for the next 11 hours do some work gary it's your <laughs> job where you can just watch painting streams for 11 hours i want that <laughs> that'd be good um i think we'll uh we'll do some where we we have it planned what we're teaching as well so yeah you know throughout these streams i'm just going to be chipping away at this and uh I'll only paint it on stream as well. Um, but we'll do some in the future where we tell you well in advance what I'm going to be showing and it'll be something specific and, and you know, it might be something more like skin start to finish. Um, but these were just a bit of fun, really, and, and answer any questions. And and a lot of it for me is is to just show you this figure, what it looks like. And, and you can get quite far, quite fast on these models. Like, they're not... They're not, they shouldn't be intimidating. Um, it's it's bigger than a, than like a Warhammer model, but they're not scary big. So I keep grabbing the Necron Lord because it's new and people know it. But, uh, you know, it's not a million miles bigger. Yeah. Now, have you got some... Um, I don't know if you've got a Lariel or something there or... <sighs> i got... I've got uh, a Primark. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's always, always a good one. Um, uh, not ruin everything. I've got two. Even a, even a Primaris or something. Yeah, we'll do a Primark. There's a Primark. And um, is it, what's this, £85 and £35? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. So anyway, um, <laughs> I'll get you, get you a Primaris. Uh, We've got their my Mike, favorite uh, old Where is it? Uh, Yeah, Mike, I'd love to get the sculptors on. Um, we'll, we will see. I will try and get I will try and get someone who's been involved in each of the different processes on over the next few weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll try our best. There you go, Primaris. Bigger but um, not crazy scary, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's have a look at this yellow then. That's one coat, probably needs two. <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, the best example is on my Logan, um, where I airbrushed the base coat on in that. But... Uh, There you go, pretty vibrant. And that's the yellow oxide, which is not the, the bright one they do. Um, but yeah, they're good, very good yellows. The orange is my favorite though. You used that on your towel, didn't you? Yeah, it goes over black, <laughs> which is just which is just awesome, right? So right. Um, maybe I'll do her sash in like an orange or something like that. But yeah, so we've we've changed tonight. We've gone for this autumnal look and um, got a long way to go. Just base coats on here, but I can definitely see where it's heading now, which is kind of cool. 
So yeah, digging that. Not sure on the white hair. How do you feel about it? I'm not sure about white. Mm. I think I definitely. I mean, what 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 about giving her like an auburn, uh, you know, hair that sort of get sort of go red with everything? You yeah, know, you know, I love limited palette when it comes to colours and stuff. Anyway, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking what colour to base coat it now. Might go for the red leather. Just go just go full millennial and give her like green hair or something or blue hair. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh da, 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 more fang brown, that could be quite good as a base coat. Let's go for that. Yeah, that sort of colour. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. I think. I think go for Morn Fang and then a little wash. Need the Rhinox hide on everything at the moment. <laughs> and then tell me about feathers. What colour feathers? Ah, this is for the feathers on the on her back, yeah, not on the. Uh, you got some, on hawk. some on the front here, and then we've got the entire back to do. So, yeah, let's let's flick around and take a look at the back of it. I think it, it really did. I was so impressed with the work that went into the the sculpting on the on the back of this model. Uh, Ivan put in. Um, it, it's just so interesting. Um, the the leather actually, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but when I pre highlighted it, it's bonkers how good it is. It looks like a real piece of leather, the texture on it. Mm. And it's it's subtle and it'd be hard to paint, but man, oh, yeah. And it wasn't until I pre highlighted it and I could and it picked it out super well. I was like, wow, that's because cool. there's some is there some sculpted texture in that leather, tiny bit? So, yeah, it's like perfect. You'll mm. you'll, nev you'll never see it on this, but. Um, I might take a picture of it pre-highlighted with my macro lens just so you can see how good it is but uh, in the hand it's just bonkers good so I was well impressed with that in fact the texture on all of them yeah it's been nice hasn't it I think that's certainly something that um, CAD has, has allowed for uh, yeah, the, 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 you know and when you get a sculptor who's good taste and, and knows how to use it it's it's, it's really lovely um, Mike's just saying how he likes that there's lots of different surfaces to paint across the sort of model range. Cloth yeah, on this yeah. one, loads of skin on the woodsman, armor on the uh, on the sword geezer. I assume you mean the warrior there, uh, Mike. Um, that's that's something that's that's very deliberate um, and stems a lot from us being a first and foremost a, a company that that produces painting tutorials um, and, and and painting classes and again from Andy's experience in competitive painting display painting uh, it was was making sure that we had those surfaces you know it's, it's all well and good thinking of a cool pose or a cool model but there's there's a lot more to the we feel anyway a lot more to the the detail the intricacies the, the than uh, than perhaps meets the eye um, possibly one of the reasons this project took us so long to to, to, to realize um, but we've certainly been very very happy. It's funny, actually, because the two I did the box art for um, are really detail heavy. And the, the style of painting is so different to this um, that it, it's quite funny painting this model because it's a totally different experience to painting those other ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite nice. There's almost no uh, long sort of brush strokes on those other models. I found myself with the detail brush pretty much straight away and uh yeah i started with the size three on this model and i did not pick up the size three once for the other guys that's interesting because the the uh the you know the warrior is just straight in with the detail right mm, mm. so um i think the first thing i did was a little highlighting on the shoulder and it's just like a little ch -ch -ch tiny kind of detail so yeah, very, very different experience to this model. I'm really digging that hair colour now. Yeah, lovely stuff. Well, how? What do you think about it next to the bird, though? Uh, yeah, so the bird's going to change quite a lot mm. um, and become a lot cooler. And also, I'm starting with this colour, but when I looked at some hawk references, it had a lot of this brown in and a lot of white areas, so I'm going to pick out a lot of 
sort of individual, like a, a white belly sort of thing. Um, I'll need the I'll need the photo on the screen when I do it. Um, but yeah, so I think that will transform quite a lot because you're right, it is too close right now. But we'll we'll change the bird. That's a very so, specific suggestion from Andrew about what about platinum blonde with some magenta in the shading. Uh, very cool. I would love to see a platinum blonde version of this model. Gone orange now. I'd hate to paint that those colours over <laughs> over <laughs> this brown. It'd be quite tricky, but. Uh, yeah, it's cool. So I've actually completely changed the idea tonight and um, kind of like where it's going, really. No purple yet. Much to, uh, you know, <laughs> get those complaints. <laughs> well, speaking of speaking of complaints, uh, we've had a, a comment about uh, why, why is she looking away from where she's shooting and, uh, and whatnot. We've had a few... Uh, questions about the, the 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 choice with this model of of uh having her being blind and and whether the bow is is realistic and uh, and all the rest of it and i think uh there's the most important thing at the end of the day right is making a cool looking model and you know she's a blind elf with a three-eyed hawk that helps her see where she can shoot and she lives halfway up a mountain and you know yes there's certain uh influences from 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 regions and, and and peoples in our world um but at the end of the day we just we just wanted something cool um and i think that idea of a, a blind elf with a a bird that helps her shoot was was what we've achieved with it um really she's should be turning her ear and then yeah well I, she sort of is isn't she her head is ever so slightly cocked so that the ear is is towards and that's interesting someone else mentioned that in the uh in the chat that they they they, they assumed oh her ear is is and someone else is saying she's shooting by hearing and stuff so that's the nice there's... looking directly down the arrow path yeah. as well so the bird is looking exactly where the arrow should go mm -hmm. and then she's kind of almost yeah cocking her ear right so um i think that the sculptor did a both Max, the the artist and the the concept artist, and and Ivan, the sculptor, I think, have really really smashed it with this model. Um, and perhaps, perhaps it's one of those models that will make a little bit more sense when you see it in the three hundred and sixty or, or or see it in your hand. I think um, so. In, in the we hand. try try not to over. You know, it's important to us that things make sense, but also, as I say, we're um, when you look at it, do you think it's cool? Is always going to be the a number one thinking oh stefan says the academic bust has been unlocked yeah way to close the stream out with it has indeed so that's cool right have a natter and i'm gonna go and show that now on the uh <laughs> the page i'll go sort that out while we're on yeah well i'm kind of happy with what i've done tonight because i've kind of got the scheme set uh, I think I'll base cut a few more elements. Um, but yeah, now I've got the scheme in. That's really just a case of, of highlighting it. Yeah, start it fairly dark. So it would just be a case of adding a few highlights to areas. Um, I think I'm going to just add a lot of focus around this area and not do many highlights on the, uh, the cloth down here. But no, I don't think it will take that long to paint i'd like to um yeah just make sure everything's nice and neat and tidy but then i can really start working on uh detailing it properly i think i'll get the bird out of the way and then uh yeah get all the skin and the hair and things like that but i think after the bird and you've done the, the torso here then it'll just fly through this model really i found the the cloth very nice and easy to paint because you've got this zigzag pattern which i know is a specific type of fold isn't it um and that's very easy to paint because you just need to paint one side light one side dark and um that's not particularly challenging to organize in your head so yeah i'm enjoying it and um this won't be the only version i paint actually this this model's just for painting on the live stream so i will probably do another version where um i take a lot longer on it to be honest but 
this is just fun uh, seeing what we can do on the live stream and playing with colors but hopefully seeing it in in the hand and and seeing me paint it uh makes you more excited to get one yourself or makes you less worried about painting a, a larger scale miniature if it's something you haven't done before and uh, also reassured you that it's quite strong because uh, she does she does look rather dainty uh, we did work really hard on this connection you know we just we, we said to the sculptor said to the producers you know what what do we think about this connection and you can see i'm putting quite a lot of weight on it it'll go but it's decent mm -hmm. we wanted a strong connection without it looking you know really chunky because we could have had loads of really thick feathers um it's always tricky as a miniature producer to find the line between fine details and then just models that are going to break um these feathers are quite fine but it means they look fantastic they're not horrible chunky plastic feathers um they're just one they're of just... the reasons why we're not going to be scaling her down or, or, yeah. so we're not going to directly just shrink shrink the uh the file as it were to create a, a 32 mil model because you just won't you just won't get that yeah we've really they're really made for this this scale yeah. and we would like to do these characters maybe one day in 32 mm. but it would need to be redesigned to to survive basically so uh if it was 75 then it would be solid because it would be bigger but we we would worry about making them 32 and for the same reason we don't do stls we really care about the end product of our characters so we want them to be cast in nice resin printed the right size and um so you get a nice end product so yeah that's sure that's the reason we are currently not doing stls or 32s but we gonna need to put that in the fact i think it's been quite a quite a common one yeah questions. um so yeah. just to say john thanks for the uh the questions around uh sort of where she was looking and, and all the rest of it it's it's always nice to have the opportunity to discuss sort of the reasoning behind the models um and as i say, i think that conversation in itself was interesting the idea of is she cocking her ear here is you know as andy mentions the, the eyeline of the hawk um so it's nice to be able to to perhaps explain those in more detail especially not just in text text mm -hmm. as well i think it yeah you can often get lost in sometimes lost the tone and things when when, when we're texting stuff um uh, oh another one from john is is who whose idea was the warrior the samurai elf um largely all the ideas were were very much communal between between me and andy it's it, it's it's a very it's a very good working relationship we have um i think i think possibly andy may have said a, a samurai type thing and i may have said oh let's make him like a beetle or something but i think it was more you you know yeah it may just have literally just been me going through uh sort of alternate myth and alternate history for our world i was like well you know the samurai is such a such a iconic warrior you know why don't we see why don't we see what an elf samurai would look like it's 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 very rarely do we ever do the things in in a vacuum um, there are of course elements that we each work on more um but certainly early on it's 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 lots of lots of conversations i mean they they do generally go no i think that's stupid or yes i think that's brilliant there's there's not a whole lot of nuance to it but you know, we have enough ideas that that we usually get something that we like, and I think that was as as sort of corny or cheesy as it, as it may sound. We we went into this Kickstarter, sort of going, you know, is this is this how we can? We wanted to know if we could be a realistic miniatures producer, you know, and and it's shown us that. But had we even, you know, just barely funded and all the rest of it, the the real confidence or, or satisfaction from the project is knowing that the product is exactly as we envisioned it um you know it took a lot of work to get there but there's there's a lot of pride to be had in in knowing that at least when these models reach people's hands even if it had only been five people um we knew we knew that we were proud of what we'd what we'd been able to produce with the the people we'd work with um so that was rad yes the bust is amazing and awesome so you can all go and have a look at it now yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bang it on all the social medias in a bit. <laughs> Might do it in the morning. Um, so yeah, that's uh, 
Can't wait. So can't wait to talk about. We'll talk about him lots more. Um, I'd like to say that you should take full credit for the uh, the warrior. In my opinion, I definitely think I definitely think there were there were ones where it was really strongly our idea that was brought to the table, and I do think that one was yours mm. because you know I, I, the hunter really was the one I was passionate about doing. Mm. Mm. Um, but I definitely think the warrior was your kind of miniature mm-hmm. and um the executioner too was something that i didn't uh have a vision for like you but it became my favorite model very fast yeah so that was kind of cool yeah um, i think that's the one both of us agree on 100 percent is how much we love that executioner model yeah uh, but the, the so little, the little we about the other ones pretty much daily so um, yeah, the little hunter just turned out amazing as well like, yeah and i'm i'm really pleased for you on that one i know i know you really dig that that character archetype you know um and, and where some of that inspirations come from 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 for her um i love her with the spear she looks yeah cool spear you lucky kickstarter people this bus though is just the yeah so oh, a few people have asked us about whether we'll do alternate weapons for the, the busts. Um, we're looking into it. It's not as simple as just bang the file on. Um, we, we did have some changes to the busts. Uh, they're not just a straight scaled up uh, version of the 54. So we're going to have a look and, and see if there's there's some options with that for, for future future stretch goals. I've got them both here and they're um, they're actually quite different poses to make it work for a bust and and the spear would be quite crazy on the uh, <laughs> on the hunter bust yeah man um, some some power in those legs says mike yeah the the sculpting on the legs is just it's just brilliant you know perhaps perhaps this certainly isn't the stream maybe we'll discuss it on a later stream of ours or maybe we'll discuss it on on someone else's show um but getting the the anatomy right um particularly with a lot of these models being female as well um, you know, I, I just just love the the power that there's that's that's sculpted into that that character. Um, I think we we spoke about um, uh, using uh, CrossFit athletes as a as an idea and gymnasts when we were talking about her um, her sort of body shape and, and and all of that. And I think I think they've executed it absolutely brilliantly uh, on that one. Um, let's close this out. I think now. But so we'll just answer the last few questions. Uh, looking most looking forward to painting Dre Fend and Wolf. Yep, I think a, yeah. lot, a lot of people are looking forward to getting that that set and doing the the diorama. The eighty mil plinth that we're releasing, I believe, works nice for them, doesn't it, Andy? Uh, yep. So I will show you because I started the wolf today and really, really enjoying it. Um, it's quite amazing to paint and it gives you a lot of freedom tutorial coming for this on the youtube how to paint fur uh and also how to paint this model oh, i've got this 80 mil plinth. fans out there got this 80 mil plinth um which has the base that wolf comes with on the top um so he fits on there really nicely and then i will grab her and just pop her on the pin and you can just see what it looks like on the 80 mil but yeah, it's wonderful. So yeah, really nice on an 80. You could do a bigger base, like a square rectangle or 100 mil, but 80 mil is quite cute. And the bases that they come with fit on there perfectly. So um, loads yeah, of I great can't wait to see that. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. And um, I feel in a quite a good place having the base almost done and the wolf I got a very good start today on the wolf um further along than i thought i would be and i think that is going to take me two more days so this week it will be finished for sure uh, both these elements i want done today the uh, the wolf and the base this week and then i can't wait to get her started i think my next two models are going to be her and the bust i just want to paint them both right now. <laughs> yeah you really do don't you <laughs> i'm des- desperate to start this bust um but i obviously want to finish my diorama so yeah can't wait to have them as a pair and it's been um 
a real pleasure having them on the shelf next to me. Yeah. Ever since I finished the Warrior, having them on his snow base, um, yeah. it's just really nice to look at because I've got black shelves and that snow base just looks epic. No, nah, it's really nice. It's gone down very well, that snow base. And that tutorial was went out this weekend, I think, on Patreon, didn't it? On our, our Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. Looking forward to, to watching that one. Um, so let's just close this out then, see if there are a few more comments. Uh, will there eventually be law precipitating from the line of models? Uh, yes, there will. We we would love to put out a little sort of source book and and talk more about not just the characters and the world, but also say that the whole thing is a, a project and it's something we are uh, actively looking at at the minute as to whether that's something that happens in this project or whether it's something that happens in the next uh, elf uh, batch, as it were, if you, if you want to call it that, how, how we, we finish off the elf the elf range of, of Deogard. Um, this has given us confidence yeah. though, right? Like, basically, yeah. we, we want to do it all, but we mm -hmm. actually needed to, to know if, if people wanted to see it. And now we've been given this amazing uh, confidence boost and Deogard will be continuing and we'll be doing bigger, better things, right? Very much, very much. Um, Robert, uh, big fan of the models, uh, paint while taking care of your door. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, but that's uh, it's important to us. As I say it's something we'll, um, we'll, we'll keep doing. We did with a sci-fi range, and we, we plan to do with a, a lot of our ranges. Um, Christian, just wanted to compliment the models, uh, supporting you despite having way too many miniatures to paint left. There's no such thing as uh, too many miniatures uh at all i think we're all we all know that but it was something we we did think of in that at least they'll look really nice in the display box on the shelf while you're waiting to uh wait waiting to get to them i've just got the busts on the plimps and they yeah. look amazing <laughs> <laughs> really do yeah chris really. dwarves yeah there will be dwarves but we will get to dwarves don't worry don't worry I was um, thinking about that today. i might get away with one i think at the moment so but that's progress so we'll uh it is actually you know gary they need a foe a dueling set would be awesome wouldn't it just oh a dueling set it just a dueling um, set but mm. perhaps that's something we'll we'll talk about at a later time um so yeah <laughs> thanks guys it's it's been a really nice stream again um we'll have a chat about the next one perhaps Perhaps Saturday or something like that, but we'll um, we'll put the uh, we'll put it up with a, a good few days notice um, what we're doing. Um, and as I say, we're, we're going to look at trying to get some of the people on that have that have been involved in the process, uh, not not just us. Um, so we have a, have a chat with them, and you can hear their insights on on working with it. We're very keen to to share as much as we can, really, with you guys. You know, we've we've been living this for three years, so it's it's very nice to finally be able to share the excitement with other people to the it's uh, it's just new uh, new to them um but yeah do you want to any more thoughts on the paint mate before we close out so you want to sort of do a quick quick overview um yeah so i hope you kind of in, enjoyed me messing around on the model <laughs> i say i've not been doing anything formally in terms of teaching or uh, anything but it was really just to smoosh some paint around it's my favorite word i got from you henry and um and yeah just you to see what it's like putting paint on these and what the models look like when you've got them in the hand real things um like i said every time we do a stream I'll, I'll probably work on it a bit more and i'll always tell you what i'm doing um but it looks like this is going to be the model i do a tutorial for so i'll be doing a proper tutorial on this model by the look of it um, yeah from the voters yeah and well, hmm. Also, let us know what you enjoy on the stream. If you want to see us um, showing off just the models and the box arts or answering questions or showing you more pictures of the whips, let us know what you'd like to see in the streams. Um, we have got some plans that we're going to do, but it'd be good to uh, see what you enjoy when you've watched us on these streams because um, last time we just kind of chatted and this time we did some more painting. So, yeah, I think that's it from me, really. Awesome. Well, thanks, bud. It was really good to watch it, um, and it was nice to uh, have a lot, of, a lot of questions. Sort of nice, organically grew out of of the painting, which is which is always helpful. Um, a lot like 
when we run a class, actually, some of that um, <laughs> to be just sat around and chatting and, and, and having that immediate feedback or that, that immediate response was really, really good. Um, so, yeah, so thanks again, guys. Um, if you've supported us on the Kickstarter, thanks ever so much. If you're on the fence, then go on, jump in. It'll be fun. There'll be loads of cool stuff. Uh, and uh, share, share, share. It's it's a small hobby. This is a niche part of a niche hobby. Um, you know, we, the only reason we succeed is is when you guys tell your friends about it and and, and help them get excited as well. Um, so we will see you really soon. 